Hello again everybody and welcome to Test Flight and the L39 Albatross. So in this series I'm going to go through step by step what I always do to learn an aircraft from scratch. Starting right here, I'm just up in the free flight mission, getting a feel for the aircraft and getting some basic controls mapped as far as axes for stick rudder and throttle and just anything else that occurs to me. Trim, for example, that I'm manipulating right here to make it a little bit easier to fly. And just getting a feel for what I'm going to be in for once I do learn all the procedures as far as, oh goodness, uh, come back here, as far as the startup shutdown, the systems work, and everything that it takes to get one of these aircraft in the air in the first place. So there is going to be a lot of preparation involved in getting back to this point and back into the air because there is a lot more to learn that's, well, pretty important. And these aren't necessarily going to be tutorials that I do as I go, but I am going to go methodically step by step through, well, all the procedures in the manual, not necessarily trying to learn them step by step, trying to learn how the systems work and what the significance is of the procedures and the processes that are laid out in the manual. Now, the L-39 is primarily a trainer aircraft, and I'm finding that it's very, very, I might have spoken too soon, very easy to fly is what I was about to say, and I've I think I've lost this. Okay, let me just go ahead and break off and do my own thing so I can I can actually talk coherently. But the L-39 is a trainer aircraft used by Russia and a smattering of other so former Soviet states and just a whole host of others. The list is huge. We're due to get, this is the C model, we're due to get the ZA model, which is a ground attack variant at a later date. It entered service in the early 70s and is still used extensively in the Russian Air Force as a a trainer and since it is very very responsive and very easy to fly it is used also by a number of aerobatic teams so like I said before I'm just going to go through my normal process of learning the aircraft so feel free to stick around and follow along as I go so I'll begin right now and like I said I have already mapped some of the basic controls so all I need to really do now is just get a feel for the cockpit before I really start to dig into some procedures so that once I start to look for switches as they're called out in the checklist or in the manual I'll know in general where to look and then from there I can narrow it down to specific switches on specific panels or specific gauges on specific panels. So I'll start in the front cockpit and we have incidentally two cockpits here. That's one of the draws of the L-39. I'm in the forward, sort of the student cockpit with all the controls and all the instrumentation. And then if I hit keyboard combination 2, I'm in the rear, sort of the instructor cockpit that has all the basic controls and the controls back here in fact can override in many cases the controls from the forward cockpit but yeah we'll have to go through all the all the locations and I think sort of mercifully as far as the setup here everything is in general in the same location the rear cockpit as it is in the forward cockpit that I'll go back to now so yeah let me go ahead and just sort of trim it out for level flight here and I'll go around and start to look and see where everything is at so just starting at the back lift, okay, I have oxygen system controls, more oxygen controls, fuel shutoff. These are communications, navigation controls, and then of course our throttle and engine controls. Now, flaps, landing gear controls. I have, okay, lights. These are, uh, okay, taxi landing, and it has a searchlight that we'll definitely be checking out. Okay, and then on our main console, just our basic flight instrumentation. This is pretty standard when it comes to... A Soviet or just red air in general which this aircraft does kind of sort of fall into the category of and then on the center pedestal we have weapon system controls electrical controls up here on the right side which is basically a circuit breaker panel okay more communications navigation and okay ECS environmental control system controls for cockpit pressurization heating and other things right here okay this is an IFF system identify a friend or foe right there, and okay, more indications, emergency system controls, so I'm approaching a hill here, I'm going to need to break here in just a second, and okay, more electrical circuit breakers back there in the back, okay, let me bring it around here, let me go to the aft cockpit real quick, and yeah, like I said, everything is sort of, <laughs> that's kind of neat, as you move the aircraft around, you can see the, you can see the, uh, the core there sort of move. Very, very nice touch. Okay, and okay, starting from the back left here. Okay, oxygen controls, more oxygen controls, and yeah, it, like I said, it mirrors the forward cockpit in a lot of ways here. So, got my throttle, engine instrumentation, flap and landing gear controls, main console with the caution warnings, the main flight instrumentation, and then in addition to the normal controls, we also have right here on the center pedestal 
some controls that we can use to introduce system failures into the system so that the guy in the front is going to have to deal with uh, troubleshooting and coping with some failures and I'll go through what all those are once we get going I'm sure okay back here we have what are you you're you're just more circuit breakers and yeah, just more more controls right there I'll have to look at that in a little bit more detail uh, okay navigation controls and then emergency controls so uh, like I said earlier as well if I go back to the forward cockpit we have more controls up here more instrumentation and this is really where most of the flying that I do here is going to be from the forward cockpit now also as we get going here we do have the capability even though this is a trainer aircraft to fire weapons it doesn't have a gun but we can fire rockets and bombs using this gun sight as a an alignment aid so it's going to have wingspan corrections we can use the control right here to elevate and well de-elevate the reticle in the middle of the gun sight so that we can do some manual bombing it's not going to have like a ccrp or ccip a type control for us so everything is just going to be based off of angled we set the gun sight dive angle airspeed and altitude is what we're going to be using to then make that accurate so that's going to come up a little bit later as we get going here and the very first thing I'm going to do is go back to the menu and have a quick look at all the options that are available to us right now in the open beta version of the DCS Albatross so I'll be right back okay now in the main interface we have instant action missions that are available I was just up in the free flight and I'm about to step straight to the cold start so that we can get into looking at more of the systems and looking at the startup and shutdown taxi and eventually the takeoff and that we have rocket practice and air to air practice that we'll get to eventually as well we have a small number of single missions available emergency closer support and then mountain flying one pass hole you know what <laughs> visual navigation so a limited selection for now and if we go to the campaign we have an L39 section which is telling me that eventually something is going to come for as far as a campaign possibly something like we have for the Focke Wolf 190 or the BF 109 or even the P51 like a challenge campaign sort of like an introductory uh, training campaign that's what I would expect something along those lines and there is just a huge potential here for third parties to come in and either you know just a freely available user-made missions that are set towards the training or for you know payware campaigns along those same lines and as of right now there is also no dedicated training module for the L39 even though the selection is available for that so I'm sure with the final release that a lot more assets will be available for us to play around with but for now yeah we have everything that we need for the test flight just using the instant action or just using missions that I create myself so there is one more item here if I go up to options and if I go to the special tab under the L39 tab I'm going to have options for the gun camera and SARRP. SARRP is just a flight data recorder and the gun camera is well it's a gun camera so I have it set up right now to only display these if I'm replaying a track so as we get into this and as we get things going I'll definitely demonstrate the gun camera I'll see how the SARRP works I think that's what Wags uses actually during his videos a lot of them had that display sort of at the bottom left I think that's what this is I'll check it out in either case as we get going but for now what I need to do is get into the instant action mission and I'm going to start with the cold start and we're going to really dig into these systems and like I said before anybody can just open up a manual and do this stuff step by step what I'm interested in is how these systems work and knowing that how I can use these to my advantage as we get into different types of situations so it's going to be interesting and I'll see you in the cockpit okay we'll pick things up here on the ramp at best line I've got myself and several other L39s and a lot of other equipment out here on the ramp and I'm going to begin by bringing up the kneeboard and I'll go over the resources that I'm going to use to learn this aircraft and I'll start right here this is a checklist put together by Lino Germany and if you're incidentally if you're curious about how to get the kneeboard up it's right shift K and if you're curious about how to get stuff onto the kneeboard look in the video description there's a link to a video that tells you how to set it up and a link to a utility by Alaskan Grizzly that can add and remove stuff from it as I have a little twin engine engine off getting airborne behind me it's a busy place at the moment and yeah the link in the video description will, will tell you all about how to get this set up but this is the startup procedure 
but it also includes, as you can see, explanations and expansions of the procedure to explain what's going on and why. And that's exactly what I do here in the Test Flight series. So this saved me a whole lot of uh, time and effort just digging through manuals because it's all right here. Now, in addition to that, I have a normal checklist, also by Lino Germany, that has step-by-step -step procedures, but it doesn't have the expansions of the procedures. So this is just a quick reference. And also I have the DCSL 39 manual right here on the kneeboard. So all the stuff that I need, and I like to have this up, especially for stuff like this. So when I get to the flight controls, I'll be able to pull up. This is a visual reference to explain stuff to you. And if that weren't enough, also on my iPad right now, just to keep the kneeboard a little bit uncluttered, I have the actual L39 flight manual pulled up. And that, in fact, is where I'm going to start, because I am going to start on this at the very, very beginning, even further back than I usually do. And again, if you were looking for just a quick and dirty, tell me in three minutes how to get this thing into the air, boy, have you come to the wrong place. But I will have some links to that sort of thing in the video description, because I'm going to start with the pre-flight walk-around. And to do that, I'm going to go left control F11. And now we can, using our mouse, get out, walk around, and if we choose to do so, perform the pre-flight check. And I want to go through this once because there is a lot that we can learn about the aircraft by looking at the systems externally from the cockpit. There is a lot more to an aircraft than a cockpit after all. So let me start with this. I'll go chocks in place, fuel leaks none, fire extinguisher in place, aircraft no bank, and chocks. Speaking of chocks, let me go to the comms menu, go F8 for the ground crew, and have them install the wheel chocks. Please place the wheel chocks. Then, okay, it's telling us we need to start at the nose and then sort of work our way around the aircraft. And air pressure gauge, 120 to 150 kilograms per square centimeter. And if you look right there at the gauge, that will be the air that's used to inflate the canopy seal and to help pressurize the cockpit. Once we get to that point in the engine start, side panels closed and secured. And those would be all the panels around the aircraft. Specifically on the nose, I have two panels on the left and right side that can swing open and give access to radio equipment, the actual bottles for the pressurized air system we're looking at right there as well. Now we also have right here nose wheel, check strut, tire, and micro switch. Now let me get in here a little bit closer and yeah there we go. I'll have to come up with something after the fact to kind of zoom in on the stuff I'm talking about but you can see the micro switch and you can also see sort of a little target for the switch. So this is the weight on wheel switch and as the aircraft gets airborne and weight is removed from the tire. Kind of picture what would happen there. The tire is going to pivot right there where the strut intersects, and as the tire pivots down, that little target is going to pivot up and depress the switch. That's what's going to tell the aircraft that is in the air and that systems that should not be enabled on the ground, for example, the landing gear retraction system or the armament system for bomb release or rocket release, none of that stuff is going to work until that switch is depressed. So. That's what the pilot would be checking right now. And then just the overall condition of the gear, condition of the tire, just really, really very basic stuff. So, okay, from there, coming around to the left, it's telling us, okay, canopy, checking the condition, making sure that it's clear, it doesn't have too many scratches. Air intake clear, very important. I would want to come up here and just make sure that <laughs> there's nothing in the air intake because it can cause a lot of damage if anything gets sucked into the intake. There's a lot of air flowing through there, so you want to make sure that there's absolutely nothing right there to include any loose screws, any loose panels, or anything that could possibly detach from the aircraft and enter the intake. Okay, temperature gauge, condition. I haven't been able to find here, looking around as I've been recording this, I've been kind of pausing and then, then coming back periodically. I'm not sure exactly where the temperature probe is. Usually that's inside the intake, but nothing really popped out at me as being the probes, but I would check it in either case. And then speed brakes, checking they're retracted or it's retracted in the condition. That's underneath the aircraft. I can't really get access to it, but it's there. IFF antenna condition. Again, that's underneath the aircraft, and I would just check the overall condition. And then right main gear, checking the strut, tire, brake assembly, and gear down or landing light, basically. For a condition, just a quick cursory check. Okay, then coming around, I have one of the two pedo probes right here that I would check. The, just making sure the cover is off, basically. Checking overall condition, I have... The wing tip tank right here with the associated navigation lights. And then coming around right here, I would stop in. It's telling me just to check the overall condition of the aileron and the trim tab. So I would actually just grab the thing and kind of shake it if I were a pilot here, making sure that it moves freely or it moves as it should, as would be the normal condition. Then I would come over to the flap, check the condition. And also at locations around the aircraft right here in particular, we have 
these little tabs pointing up and on this side I have one for the main landing gear and one for the flaps. These are going to give me a visual indication from the cockpit of the position of the flaps and the position of the landing gear retracted or extended and you can see the two slotted or double slotted flaps that we have right here and that they're in the down position right now so we'll get into more of that once we get into the aircraft and any pylons or stores and right now I have nothing loaded on the aircraft if I did I would check the condition and make sure that everything is as expected now wing skin intact no dense bulges or cracks rivets undamaged and that's just Again, basic overall condition of the aircraft. Now coming around, it's telling me that I need to check oil quantity, 4.5 to 7.5 liters, or in other words, within limits. So I think I would just have like a little indicator right there, and I would just check that oil is visible, essentially is what I would be checking there. And that would tell me that the correct quantity is there. Now, antenna under the fuselage, just for condition, and then coming on around to the rudder, radio antenna, and the static discharger. So. We come around here just looking up to the rudder and the static dischargers or static dissipators is they're sometimes called you can see two examples right here just on the a horizontal stabilizer just by the elevator these are just there to well do exactly what they sound like to dissipate static electricity because excessive static electricity is bad for electronics and hurts a lot if you walk up to an ungrounded aircraft and touch it with a static uh, build up on it and it also serves as sort of an exit point for lightning strikes so uh, since any lightning hitting the aircraft is going to take the path of least resistance out of the aircraft if you have static dissipators right here discharging static electricity that's in most cases where the lightning is going to exit the aircraft and it says here that I'm just checking that it contains at least three unbroken wires and you would have little wires extending from the back of them and yeah those look fine to me now okay coming around here I'll be checking the elevators and elevator trim tabs for condition I would get back here to the engine nozzle now it's going to tell me right here that on the exhaust cone no cracks dents or fuel leaks and I would be able to just get in here and have a look in there just be looking for any wetness for the fuel leaks or any hydraulic leaks that have seat back here although it's such a, a mechanically oriented aircraft that I don't think there is any actual hydraulic fluid this far back I think the only hydraulic system and again we'll get into this as we start to look in more depth I think it just stops at the landing gear and the only thing that I would really be expecting back here would be a fuel leak but yeah checking for overall condition okay coming around checking my other elevator and then down to the left side of the aircraft and it's going to tell me here to basically repeat what I checked on the right side the other side but I do have the APU exhaust nozzle and and yeah you can see the yellow arrow posor that's I guess it's checked for like warning or attention pointing at the APU exhaust so when we have the APU auxiliary power unit powered up that's where the exhaust is going to be it's very very hot you don't want to have any tools or equipment right there you definitely don't want to stand by it when the APU is running so that's what I would be checking there checking for cracks or soot and then okay then overall condition of the flaps overall condition of the left main gear left aileron left tip tank and lights left wing left engine intake for obstructions and from there I would just hop up into the cockpit and do some checks up here now a check kind of like that would be done prior to every flight by the pilot and that's just the big hitter safety of flight items is all that the pilot is checking the aircraft crew chief is going to have a list of things that he's he or she has already checked that's a hundred times more complicated than that but why did I do that for a flight sim I'm only going to really do it once this is probably the last time I'll do it it's definitely the last time that I'll show it but what I was really doing there and I cut about 40 minutes for that out in fact I was just going around and trying to establish some sort of context for these systems as I start to use them from the cockpit for example I took a lot of time looking at the trim tabs and you can see it's really an amazing 3d model they have here I could see the mechanism for the trim tabs I can see how they work I can see how the flaps function if I look at the landing gear doors and the gear themselves I can see the mechanism by which they lock into place and by just spending a few minutes doing this up front all these systems take on more depth and becomes something more than just a switch or a lever or a light in the cockpit and that well for me is what makes this worth doing and well if you're still with me after whatever has been 19 20 minutes well probably to you too so I'll tell you what I'll come back next time and get into the engine start and start having some more in-depth looks at systems and if you are enjoying this and if you want to see this series continue please help me out by leaving a like leaving a comment subscribing to the channel share these wherever you would like and wherever you think they would be appreciated that does help me out a great deal and it does well keeps me making these so until then thanks again and I'll see you next time